It is great to see you all again. This is Obasiden here with an interesting video for you all. So, have you guys ever read something, watched a movie, played a video game, which is what this video is primarily about, tried to study for something and just completely forgot everything afterwards? I mean, you, I mean, you just try to remember and just can't remember. Um, and you try to explain something to your friend and your friend says, What? Well, in this video, I'm going to try to explain a technique, a science-based technique, yes, this is based on science, that should help you remember more of what you play. Um, in terms of game plot, um, movie plot, whatever. The technique is called Active Recall, aka Retrieval Practice. Um, you guys have probably run across this idea, because um, it's all over YouTube now. Um, it's fairly recent research, um, even though the research dates back a hundred years. Um, it hasn't been until recently that the research has become more widespread and more looked at in terms of how retrieval can help learning. So what do I mean by retrieval? Well, retrieval is basically the process of trying to retrieve an event, skill, something you learned, any memory from memory, purely from memory. So for example, you read something you close the book and you try to recall, okay, what did I just read? What did I just learn? Can I explain this to someone else? And when you try to retrieve knowledge from memory, it actually strengthens the neural pathways in your brain to that knowledge. So it will be easier to retrieve in the future. And the best part about this, retrieval helps with understanding. So in this, in this, in the description of this video, I'm going to link a ton of different resources for you guys to check out. We're going to get more into this technique here. Retrieving knowledge from memory makes the knowledge more memorable in the future. It makes it easier to recall. You read something, you watch something, explain it to the wall after you're done. Because you, what, what's happening is that you're doing something with the knowledge. You're doing something, you're using your brain actively rather than passively. The real learning happens when you try to get something out of your brain not trying to put something into your brain, which is kind of counterintuitive, but the more you struggle, the better the learning will be. So from the book Make It Stick, they say when you, when you read a text or study lecture notes, pause periodically to ask yourself questions like these without looking in the text. What are the key ideas? What terms or ideas are new to me? How would I define them? How do the ideas relate to what I already know? And it says what your intuition tells you to do. Most studiers focus on underlining and highlighting text and lecture notes and slides. They dedicate their time to rereading these, becoming fluent in the text and terminology because it feels like learning. Why retrieval practice is better? After one or two reviews of a text, self-quizzing is far more potent for learning than additional rereading. And here, here is a, an excerpt from the book Make It Stick about a, a medical student named Michael Young. Basically, this guy struggled so much um, and he would study about 16 hours a day because that was all he knew how to do was just to read. As a matter of fact, this is what he says. I was big into reading, but that's all I knew how to do for study. I would just read the material and I wouldn't know what else to do with it. So if I read it and it didn't stick in my memory, then I didn't know what to do about that. What I learned from reading the research on learning is that you have to do something beyond just passively taking in information. Of course, the big thing is to try to figure out a way to retrieve the information from memory because that's what you're going to be asked to do on the test. If you can't do it while you're studying, then you're not going to be able to do it on the test. And the book says, the author say, he became more mindful of that when he studied. I would stop. Okay, what did I just read? What, what is this about? I have to think about it. Well, I believe it happens this way. The enzyme does this and it does that. And then I'd have to go back and check if I was way off base or on the right track. The process was not a natural fit. It makes you uncomfortable at first. If you stop and rehearse what you're reading and quiz yourself on it, it takes a lot longer. If you have a test coming up in a week and have so much to cover, slowing down makes you pretty nervous. But the only way he knew of to recover more material, his established habit of dedicating long hours to rereading, wasn't getting the results that he needed. As hard as it was, he made himself stick to retrieval practice long enough to see if it worked. You just have to trust the process, and that was really the biggest hurdle for me was to get myself to trust it and it ended up working out really well for me and he went on to become top of his class all right so as you can see this technique is really potent for learning as a matter of fact here is a research study by Jeffrey Carpick I hope I'm saying his name right 
Um, he's an awesome professor. Professor Karpik did a study where students saw a Swahili vocabulary word and they had to remember the translation of it. So there were several conditions. In one condition, students simply studied the words without trying to recall them at all. So they studied them once without trying to recall them. In the second condition, students continued studying and recalling the words until they had recalled all of them once. After a word was successfully retrieved once, it was dropped from further practice. The students did not see it again in the learning session. Other conditions in the experiment examined the effects of repeated retrieval practice. Once a word was recalled, the computer program required the students to practice retrieving the item three more times. One repeated retrieval condition had the three recalls trials happen immediately three times in a row. This was called mass retrieval practice. Then they had a space retrieval practice in which the repeated retrievals were spaced throughout the learning session. And guys, they were brought back a week later and were tested on what they remembered. And guys, look at this graph. Recall once, you remembered, look how much you remember from just studying once compared to recalling once. So one test, guys. Look at this. One test. So after you play a game, after you finish a mission, after you turn it off for the night, try to recall what you just played. Try to recall the main points, like Resident Evil 6. What I, I played Resident Evil 6 last night, and I was doing the mission where I had to defeat um, the mutated Deborah, you know, Helena's sister. And I'm like, okay, what did I just, what did I just, what just happened? Okay, so they went to an underground lab. Leon and Helena went to an underground lab, and then they were looking for Deborah. Helena wasn't explaining to Leon what was going on. They found Deborah eventually. Ada came out of nowhere. Uh, Deborah mutated into this hideous three tentacled monster. Um, eventually, they defeated Deborah, and then Helena said she's going to avenge her death. And she had to let her go, like Leon had to let go of Ada at the end. So. I did that last night and I still remember a lot of the details and if I didn't do that, I promise you, I promise you, whenever I would try to remember what happened, this would happen. Alright guys, um, so I'm going to talk about some resources that you can go. I'm going to link the study in this in the description. I'm going to link the book, Make It Stick, The Science of, of Successful Learning. Guys, if you're in school or if you're in a job and you have to learn a new skill, this is really a book to, to, to get, guys. Um, I'm, I'm telling you, it will really open your eyes to how to learn properly. Um, because that's the most important skill is learning how to learn. And here are a couple videos that really help. One is by Professor Cal Newport. Um, he talks about active recall and it, how it's the only, really the only study tool that you really need to master. That and spacing, which I'll talk in a second, which I mentioned earlier too. Here's a video by Ali Abdal. I'm going to link that. He's an awesome doctor here on YouTube, junior doctor. And I'm going to link this video by, I'm going to link this video by MD Prospect. And he really goes into details about how he uses this technique. And it's really, really, really great. And it really breaks it down for you. So those are the resources. Now I'm going to talk about spacing. Now spacing is if you want to remember this long term. Sure, if you test yourself on it once you're gonna remember for like a week or two maybe maybe two um, and it'll be more strongly encoded in your mind but if you want to remember this for like months or years spacing it is really what will happen and basically it involves like repeating the retrieval like two to three times over a spaced interval so what is spacing well let me go back to the book make it stick really quick and space practice means studying information more than once but leaving considerable time considerable time, excuse me, between practice sessions. So if you quiz yourself on something once, like after you, you know, play the game, do it the next day, do it a week later, do it a month later. You will remember it better. Now I'm gonna put a graph on the screen of how humans forget. It's by German psychologist Hermann Ebbinghaus. And if you look at this graph, it shows you how fast humans forget. And you can actually interrupt this forgetting curve by doing space practice, as I said. And here's what it looks like interrupted. So as you can see, if you interrupt this, you're gonna remember something long-term. And guys, this can really be applied to anything in your life. It can be applied to studying. It can be applied to learning a skill at your job. It can be applied to remembering video game plots, which is what, which is what this video is about. Because I noticed like there's been a lot of games 
that I played in the past and I do not remember it. For instance, Resident Evil 6, I'm playing Leon's campaign again, I don't remember anything. I played the game years ago, Leon's, I only beat Leon's, and I can't remember a dang thing. I don't remember any of this, because I, I, af because after I finished playing, I just put it away and forget about it. So this is also like how you improve in skills too, I mean you um, are a musician, you can't be a better musician just by reading sheet music. Sure, there's some geniuses who can do that, but you gotta read it and then practice it, uh, preferably by memory. Um, because it strengthens the song, it strengthens, it strengthens what you've learned better in your head. Um, and I know it sounds counterintuitive, but then I wish I knew about this while I was in college. And guys, retrieval practice is also called the Feynman Technique. And you've probably heard about this too. And it's basically, um, the Feynman Technique is all about trying to explain something in the simplest terms possible. And teaching something and it's basically the best way to learn anything is what they say is teaching is the best way to learn anything so with the Feynman technique you identify a topic you try to explain the topic out loud as if lecturing their cla to a class um, preferably do this without having your notes um, and then after you've tried and exhausted your brain resources your brain meets go and try to go and go back to the source material and look up what you missed fill in any gaps in your knowledge that you you know forget go back to the source material and step four is to use simpler terms each time you try to explain and you just repeat this until you master it um it really helps with understanding and he, guys here's a bonus tip from this article rapidlearninginstitute.com all these will be linked in the description of course um but it has to deal with spaced practice um, and according to the head researcher, if you want to improve the most efficiently, it's not about playing the most matches per week or practicing the most. You actually want to space out your activity a little bit and not play so intensively. And another study out of the University of Sheffield that looked at over 850,000 players' data discovered the same insight. Players that naturally space out their practice improve more quickly. So, of course, if you play more games, you'll get better. but this is another tip that will really bolster your your skill. Um, so guys, I hope this video was helpful. This video was about how to remember video game plots. Um, but I went on and I really branched out and, and explained to you guys that this can be used to remember movie plots, what you read, skills you learn. I mean, it, it's a universal learning technique and it's really important. I mean, I didn't know about this until like I graduated from university, which is just bogus. but. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Comment below if you have any questions. I really recommend that you check out the resources that I put in the description, especially the book Make It Stick. Um, there are also other books like um, A Mind for Numbers by Barbara Oakley that goes into this. There's also How to Become a Straight A Student, I believe by Cal Newport. Uh, Dr. Cal Newport, and he explained the same. but. Nonetheless, I hope you guys are staying safe out there. I really appreciate the love and support I'm getting. I really appreciate the comments and engaging with you guys, especially on my Resident Evil 8 video. You guys are really um, throwing out some cool insights on like the wolves and the witches and st the witch in there and stuff like that. So I really love you guys. So please stay safe out there, guys, and God bless. So, 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 so.